Hello, friend. Hello, my friend. Hello, we're back and we're into double figures. Oh, yes, we are now. This is number 10. I can't believe we've been doing this for 10 weeks. I d- time's flying. Strange, We're middle of June and it's like fucking winter out there. Well, it, Everything's yeah. changed. And I'm feeling really old, sorry for myself, and crippled. Because you've got a bad back, haven't you? I genuinely have a bad back. And do you know what? I didn't think you were lying. Well, you know, you thought I was a lion. I didn't think you were lying. Oh. But... Yeah, I've got a bad back, and it's really causing me sleep. It cause, it's causing me sleepless nights. That's how oh, bad no. it is. Yeah, it's not good. <laughs> so Friday, I know, and it stems on from I've worked it out. I've got all the gels that you rub in and everything. So Friday, I was at I work. Bet you have. It was pissing down with rain, and my job entails me to bend <laughs> in and out of a van. Of right? Of course it, it does. Stop it. And in and out of the van. And my back on Friday got soaked, like, literally, through my jacket, through my <laughs> my coat, my jacket, my shirt, all the way through. And that I was, was a strong soaked. shot, then? A strong shot. <laughs> if you got soaked on your back? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sexual. Yeah. Ooh, uh, nudge, nudge, winky, winky. And um, I think I got a chill in my back, and I must was have it pulled it. Was it multiplying? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Are you losing control? You don't get it. You're not getting it, are you? It's grease. Of course, no, I'm getting it. Thank God for that. But this, this, every time anybody says chill, that seems to be what, the go-to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there we go again. Um, yeah, and no, I think that's what done it. It's what's done it. It's screwed me over. I've never really had a bad back before, haven't you? I've hurt. I've done an injury, but not in the sense of just having a bad back. I, I had a proper injury where I tore a muscle in my back. Oh. Yeah. Well, I was working. On a building site, and we there was an empty. <laughs> yeah, there was. You've never worked on a building site. First left school, I to get a, to get money. I helped out, and I was doing some labouring. And to move, we had to move a skip. Right. And they said, "Look, we'll take all four of us, but we need to ch- change the angle of the skip. It's empty. It shouldn't be a problem." And they said, "On three, we'll push." And when he said three, nobody pushed, and they jokingly left me to it. And I actually. Oh. Tore a muscle in my back. I was in agony. So that's the only time. So did you really... go on one, two, three, or did you go on one, no, two, three? No, they waited then for me go. to push, but nobody pushed on purpose, right. thinking it would be a laugh. And then actually, I tore a muscle. Lethal weapon two. So yes. yeah, I remember. Yeah, that's they grease. Fuck you in the drive <laughs> <laughs> That's grease and lethal weapon two in the first two minutes of the podcast. Well, yeah, I was going to say eighties, but grease was seventies, of course. Wasn't it was. It? 76, 78. No, 78, wasn't it? It was the year after Star Wars. Mm. Yeah. Right. I know we've we've spoken about these kind of things for a lot over the six years that we've been doing podcasts, but conspiracies. Oh. (laughs) You can't help yourself. No, you can't. Stop. Have only a talk about being camp is going to be this week's episode. (laughs) Right. So I've got a list, right, of of some conspiracies. Now, I'm a conspiracy, I'm not a conspiracy nut. Yeah. But I do like a good conspiracy. I enjoy reading about them. Yeah. I don't don't always believe them. Yeah. I'm the same as you, then. And I think that a lot of the time that people are just trying to fill their empty, meaningless lives with something that, that, that isn't there. I mean, yeah. one of the ones that isn't on here is something like Diana. That that to me was just a car crash. Yeah, yeah. Because you had a pissed up French person driving, driving and, and the paparazzi, pe- paparazzi were yeah, chasing. So that just t- a tragic accident, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. And I think the majority of things are tragic. Yeah, accidents. But um, I like to watch the YouTube videos. There's a lot of YouTube, oh, yeah. a lot I mean, of YouTube's. But there's a lot you have to weigh through a lot of shit. You'll yeah, start you them and you you'll think, oh, this sounds an interesting one. And it, there's so much clickbait about YouTube videos with yeah. conspiracy so theories. I, I want to be interested in your take on some of these. Okay, sit some of back these and ones relax. that I've got here. So the JFK assassination. I I don't think he acted alone. I don't know quite what theory I believe because there's a lot of them that I well, have. What, what theories do you know? I think it's well. There's the um, it's the government it, JFK the movie that that theory of course with the government involved. Um, yeah, but see, see, this is where, this is where. I mean, I the the JFK assassination probably is the one for me, is the one that I've been fascinated with m- most. Yeah. And if I had a chance of going to see, I always said if I had a chance of going to Dealey Plaza, I'd go. But then there was a I can't remember what the documentary was, but they showed you Dealey Plaza, and there's all these 
shysters that are doing these tours. Oh, it was it the Dark Tourist on? Have you seen that program on mm. Netflix? Yes, I think it, it might was have been on that, that wasn't it? It and might they, have been that. They take you on different ones. Yeah, and and it's so much so that there's even this one guy that drives around in like this minibus, and there's a woman dressed as um, Jackie Kennedy. That's right. And it was so tacky. Mm. And the last thing, I, all I want to do if I if I get to walk and stand on the grassy knoll is try and work it out for myself. Not yeah. to have some knobhead coming up to me and going, well, this is where they did this and this is where they did that. I don't want to be bothered. No, you want to just look yeah, just yourself. Want, I just want to look and take it in in that particular area. So, yeah, so for the JFK, like I was going to say about the movie, yeah, I got carried away with that one because I was such a big fan of Kevin Costner. That was a great film, though, isn't it? It's still a great film. It is a great film, but it's full of typical sort of Oliver Stone just bollocks yeah you know one of the main characters is an amalgamation of loads of different characters they make some great points in there mm. and the, the thing i've always done with jf the jf i've read i mean i don't normally read books but i've read about three or four different books about the jfk assassination one was saying that it was that the headshot came from one of the uh fbi agents in the car behind by mistake Right. That when they sped up, he didn't have his the safety catch on his rifle, Shit, and accidentally. Went, like but that. why would they hide that? I suppose to not get him into trouble. Well, yeah, you? yeah, and all the forensics of of. And, uh, but to me, there seems to be truths in every uh, tiny little little bits of truth in every mm. theory. If that makes sense, I just think it seems by what I've read and watched on YouTube and things like that, the Lee Harvey Oswald thing. Doesn't seem like it's plausible that it could have happened. No, just just by it just seems to me by the kind of person that he was. Um, but then there's been rifle experts that have said that he was he someone would have been capable of getting those three shots off at whatever it, I can't remember how many seconds it yeah. is. It, it, it's a fascinating thing, and it's one of those morbid things when you watch that Zapruder, Zapruder foot, footage yeah. over and over again of him with his like head just fucking. Because you see a reach out don't you, over the back of the car. Yeah, well, I mean, again, there was. I don't even know if it was fact. There was rumours that she was like reaching t- to get a piece of her husband's brain or an ear or, or something, something like that, or she was just trying to get out of the the car or mm. something like that. It is. You sort of wonder whether or not technology would actually be able to work it out yeah with like virtual reality they'd be able to work out with virtual reality the angles and and stuff like that something like that is fascinating to me Mm. i have to say i've um always been fascinated by it and i think it is the it is the first i'm pretty sure as a as a small child it was the first time i'd ever seen real death right yeah do you know what I mean? Instead yeah, of like, yeah. seeing someone dying on a in a film or yeah. something like that, that to me that was bit that of the footage, first footage. I can't remember my first footage. It was either that or it would have been that famous footage. For, I'm sure it was. Was it from Vietnam or whatever? What, we the had, little boy. Not the little boy, but they they grab a, a bloke and then they shoot him in the head and like and they just come up and grab him, shoot him in the head, and he falls down and like blood yeah. is pouring out of his head. Well, I haven't seen that one. Well. Yeah, that was just, I'm very scared. I, don't, I hate looking at footage of that. But it's it's a morbid thing mm. that they're you know I think that's why true crime podcasts are so popular. Popular. Um, so yeah, so. I don't think that's that because people know everybody that's involved in it has, has died or you but know. There, there's probably records about it. There's got to be more out, more about it than we would know, isn't there? Well, I'm, unless they really are telling the truth, and it was Lee Harvey Oswald, and they're like, all these conspiracies are telling you all of this, but th- that is what happened. But I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure there are documents that will get um, put out into the public. Yeah. In whatever, I'm sure that there's isn't there something that. Kevin Costner's character says at the end of the no, movie. there's a, isn't there a blurb that comes up in a, at a certain date they will release the documents? Yeah, but he, in in court he says about his son and he says that I'm making sure that my son um, stays fit and healthy because in the year twenty something something is when they'll release the files mm. and that and he said that's what you know I, I can't remember what what the year was I have to look back on that now yeah because that, I haven't that, watched that movie in I ages haven't, I haven't no no Gary Oldman was amazing in that film wasn't he he was so of he molded into that character star studied it was a star studied Walter Donald, Matai yeah Donald Sutherland Jack Lemon. Jack Lemore. Um Ed Asner. Mm. Yeah, there was some um Sissy was it Sissy Spacek? Yeah, Sissy yeah. Spacek. Kevin Bacon was in it. Yeah. Um 
Yeah, that was a... It was a big cast. John it, Candy. Oh, yeah, I course. forgot he was in it. That must have been coming up to one of his last films. Must have been. Yeah. Must have been. Okay. Right. So what other ones, then? Right, so the 9-11 cover-up, where they're saying that 9-11 was an inside job. I don't know enough about it, I'll be honest. I, I've not... That one's not struck me as being... I'm not... It's not that I'm not interested. I don't know. I've not been gripped by that one. The conspiracies I've heard that it was their own government to start the war on terror and everything like that. I don't know. I've not really looked into it. Well, I think it's a, it's a, there's a documentary on YouTube I think called Loose Change. Is it called Loose Change? That's going to be awful if I got that wrong. That was quite a famous one. But again, there are loads of, yeah. of conspiracy documentaries on on. Oh, I did read YouTube. an article about the 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 girders, the, the steel girders, and the way they bent showed that they must have been explosive. Because if it was a plane had hit and it just crumbled, and the way it fell and all of that, I but I don't know. Do you think that was? A... I I honestly. It goes a little bit with the one, something, another one from a little bit later on is that there are so many people that would have had to have been involved. Yeah, a bit like the surely, moon one. Yeah, yeah, well, that's the other one. Oh, right, sorry. About. Yeah, 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 yeah. Shut up, man. Oh, right. I'm, <laughs> um, I'm jumping the gun. Yeah, so it's it's that there are so many people that would have to be involved in that. That, but then there's part of me thinking that that yeah that they've done that before. Yeah. Uh, there was a there was a nine eleven podcast I was listening to. And they, and they get they were talking about uh, when it was Cuba, um, when JFK came into um, came into power, I suppose. Yeah, anyway. well, the Cuba Missile Crisis. Yeah, but they they were talking about doing something on mainland um, USA, doing some kind of um, disaster or something, and blaming it on Cuba, so that they could go into Cuba. So they, there's documents that are saying this, and then oh, when, right. when JFK came in, he went, "No, we're not going to do that." So it's sort of like taking president saying, "Look, they've done it before. The yeah. government have done this where they've wanted to do something like this before. So why wouldn't they do it again?" So that started the war on Iraq again, didn't it? Well, it, they're saying that it, it it was for them to get in and get the oil mm. and to get rid of Saddam. No, we're not Saddam. It was we, Saddam Hussein in Iraq then. Was it? Yeah, because obviously. Bush Senior, there was the Iraq War, the the Gulf War, yeah, yeah, in the early nineties, wasn't there? Mm. And then that sort of ended, or how? I mean, I don't even know what that one was about. See, this is the thing. It's like, I mean, and I think the trouble is with going down the rabbit hole of YouTube and going to mm. and and listening to podcasts. It's everybody. Everybody has facts. So you're thinking, and that's what I meant about the Kevin Costner, is because I loved Kevin Costner so much, for a long time I thought that that was the definitive story yeah, of yeah. the JFK assassination. Until then, and if I ever watch, um, I've done it for um, The Dirt movie. Oh, what, Motley Crue? I've yeah. done it for Bohemian Rhapsody. That if you go on YouTube, then people will say, these are the things they didn't get right in the film. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, Bohemian Rhapsody is a perfect case that Freddie Mercury didn't have AIDS when he did Live Aid. No, no. So there was no big um, thing beforehand and getting the band all back together again. And, and they made it sound like it was the first time he played Wembley Stadium and things like that. It was their biggest ever gig. But and, they yeah, made a massive And the fact that he gig. couldn't sing properly in the practice beforehand and then he managed to on the day, which obviously is great for artistic license yeah. and uh, to add a little bit of drama, but it was all bollocks. Yeah. You know, and it's stuff like that, and it's with all historical things, especially Hollywood. They like to Braveheart. Braveheart is a is a is a, a huge great example. one, isn't it? They turned um, that Scottish king, Robert, what was it, Robert the Bruce, into a complete traitor or yeah, whatever. Yeah, and he's like the biggest Scottish hero out there. Well, and the fact that he had a, a child with a a French. Um, uh, dignitary, the, yeah. Or whatever. Well, whatever. she was the, the yeah. she was going to be the queen, That's wasn't it. she? So it's all stuff like that where they and they, you sort of think, well, why do you do that? Why do you change it? And and apparently for Rocket Man, there's a lot there that is. But they've admitted that though. Uh, well, I'm sure I, the other ones do admit it. I'm sure no, no. Ones... But I've seen um, an interview with David Furnish and that, and they're saying that the reason they embellished it like that is about his name. He didn't look at a picture of uh, John Lennon yeah. at all. It was John. I can't think. Babbling John Brooke or whatever it's called. Okay. There's some blues singer, and he got it from that. It was nothing to do with John Lennon, but they said it was just people would relate to that character a lot more, like John Lennon, more people know who he was. Yeah, yeah. 
and they just did it on purpose. But they do call it a musical fantasy. They don't call it a biopic. Yeah, but then every biopic or things like that that has those moments mm. where they've taken certain things and then embellished oh, it. Oh, yeah, or, absolutely. Or stuff like that. The, the, I would say the majority of them. Yeah, All right. Area 51 and the aliens. <clears throat> I think there is a place, right? I genuinely do. But I don't think... It, and it probably used to be Area 51. But I think that's long gone because it's too well known now. Well, if, I... if there's going to be a place where there's... Stud- and there's got to be... They were. They're going to be studying what's out there. You would be naive not to be. You... I, I can imagine there's an area fifty one, but I would think there's an the area fifty one is tourist now. No, but it's it's it it's not aliens that's there. It's craft that we are do. You know, we are yeah. making. Humans are making. That is like ultra top secret. And can yeah. go faster than the speed of sound and Absolutely. All, all, the, of that all that kind the, of stuff. I mean, I genuinely, that's what I was starting to think, is it's too well known where it is now and what it is or what people assume is there. And I just think they use that and heighten that to hide what else is going on elsewhere. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all, just that, that decoy. Because the, the whole aliens thing is something that... By law, by just by law of averages and law of chance, yeah, there's there has be some, to be yeah something, something, some life form out there. Yeah, I don't I, necessarily think it's in like an ET kind of thing. No, I mean it might just be like you and me on another. Oh God forbid, that wouldn't be nice, would it? It'd be a, a, a combination of the two of us. <laughs> <laughs> the alien will look just like the two of us. No, but th- there's got to be some sort of other life form. It'd be naive to think we're the only people out there. Mm. In in the millions of galaxies and star planes or whatever is out there, to think we're it. And also, if there is something at Area Fifty One, do you not think that that's the first thing that Trump would ask to see when he's president? Well, he might. He might and, already. And if he has, he would fucking say something He'd by tweet now about it. Wouldn't he, he would. But then maybe that's why he said we're going to have our great space war. <laughs> Truth but that's what I think is that that because of who they've got as president now. Any kind of uh, either like the people, not above him, but the pe- his advisors are talking to each other and going, "We can't tell him that. We can't show him that because if we do, all hell break loose." Yeah. You know, so there's got to be things where they they yeah. have to manage it a little bit because, yeah, you can imagine the first thing he's do is he's going to tweet, "We have the best aliens, <laughs> the best in the world." <laughs> It'd be awful. Uh, yeah. What else have we got? Oh, Paul is dead. Do you remember oh, this the one? Oh, the Paul McCartney. So Paul McCartney on the f- the cover of Abbey Road with his his shoes, but so also he's... the uh, before and after the car crash, isn't it? Apparently, he yeah, look, that's right. He's supposed to look completely so, different before and after. And there's um, he's holding a cigarette in his right hand, where obviously he was left handed. And there's um, there's a uh, there's people that do whole talks on this, and I was actually going to download their podcast about it because I was quite intrigued to know. Because they're adamant, and they believe it's all to do with the occult as well, don't they? Paul McCartney and the Beatles and that. Did you yeah. know this? Well, on this, this is from Time magazine. It says the Paul is dead believers think that Paul accompanied uh, the backward tape loops and veiled references to death with album covers that illustrated the loss of their friend. So, obviously, Paul McCartney. The original cover of the '66 Yesterday and Today album featured the Beatles posed amid raw meat and dismembered doll parts. Yeah, symbolising McCartney's gruesome accident. If fans placed a mirror in front of the Sgt Pepper album cover, the words Lonely Hearts on the drum logo could be read as one, as in the number one, one in the word, one times he die, one, one, one. And, of course, there's the Abbey Road cover on which Mm. John, George and Ringo for when all pretense and pretended to cross the street as a funeral procession, John wore all white like a clergyman, Ringo the mourner, dressed in black, George donned jeans like a grave digger, Paul wore no shoes, he didn't need them because he was dead, and walked out of step with the others. And I just read somewhere that they were completely twatted on drugs. Yeah. I mean... Seems more likely, doesn't it? It's, it's, it's somebody looking at it going, yeah, I mean... I, I, it, it's, I'd love to know on all of these conspiracies who was ground zero. Yeah. Who was the one person? The same as like whenever somebody dies and then a sick joke comes out. There's always there's got to be one person. The, the, yeah. Well, the, it's, it's, it starts somewhere, doesn't it? It has to. But there's a, yeah. There's um, Mark Devlin does a talk about it, doesn't he? About uh, Paul McCartney and that. Right. 
You remember Mark Devlin? No. He's a, a I don't want to say a conspiracy theorist. He's he, he well, tries. He probably he, is. He, well, I suppose it is what he is. Uh, he speaks the truth. Uh, or what he believes. Well, you see, no, but this is what, no, no, but this broad. is what he he says. He speaks the truth, and he does. He's done a lot of research, so say, on the Paul McCartney thing, and he actually goes around and does talks about it in different cities. And he's on tour now. If you want to go and listen to it, oh well, there you go. Get your tickets. Yeah, but um, but I, I, no, he, I'm intrigued looks, to listen to he this. He looks like what? So he's saying that it, that Paul did die. Yeah, really, and it's all to do with the occult and a cover up. And well, there's... she sells sanctuary. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, you know, and that side of things. But then there's the Rothschild rumours, isn't it? That they run everything and they tell people, governments around well, the that, world. Well, isn't that the Illuminati? Yeah. Because that, kind of, that, that was another one that I had, where you've got the like the New World Order and... And, and I think that chap link, links all his stuff into that as well. Right. So. But I'm intrigued to hear it. Just like you were when we were in L.A. to go and listen to the Scientology and take the personality test. You know what? That that was something I thought about a couple of weeks ago, actually, because I can't remember who was talking about it. Again, probably on a podcast I was listening to. And I thought to myself, how, how lucky we were that we... Yeah, but cause... I was not going to do it. I was like, Pav, no. I didn't really know anything about Scientology. It wasn't until I started looking at like documentaries and yeah. stuff and thought how fucked up it is that... Oh, holy we, shit. We might never have come back. If I'd have just gone, like, sometimes I'd do, yeah, come on in, let's just have a go. Or if they'd have it. said, oh, yeah, sure, yeah, come in and see us. They they did. Well, they well, didn't, they, really. Well, they said, come and do the personality test. And you went, would we be able to have an interview? And he said, well, it's something we can talk about, but come and do the personality <laughs> test. Yeah, all right. And I was like, no, I'm not doing but, it. mate, to be fair, they were snazzy race coats they were wearing, weren't they? I thought they were barbershop singers. Do you they... remember? And I said, there's a quartet. Hello, hello, <laughs> hello. Yeah, so that was, that was. I feel like we got away with that one. Yeah, we, we dodged a bullet with that I one, didn't we? we? Did. Yeah, because that was secret societies control the world. So you think that that's possible, do you? I don't know. I, I really don't know on that one. I don't know enough. I've not really looked into it. I've heard people say about the Rothschild, a, a name of the family. I mean, they are one of the richest in the world, aren't they? I and they no own, idea. like, pretty much... Don't they make cigarettes? <laughs> that's Rothmans. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and that's showing your age. Do they still even I... make Rothmans? You'll be talking about senior service and Woodbury <laughs> next. I can remember the Rothmans Grand Prix, which was a <laughs> that's right. snooker tournament in the that's 80s. It. And oh, those were the days. Cigarette sponsored all the sports. I know. Embassy the, World Snooker Championship. And you had the JPS racing car yeah. and Marlborough. Yeah. Oh, dear. What was the silver packet? Benson and Hedge. No, no, Benson and Hedges. Although they had the Benson and Hedges Masters. They did. Oh, God. That's a silver packet. I think my mum and dad used to smoke them. I don't know. Uh, no, I can't remember. I don't know. Um,. What were we talking about? <laughs> oh, conspiracy and the Rothschilds and things like yeah, that. Yeah, so, it, it was always like when you'd hear people saying, ah, George Clooney, yeah, he's part of it. He's he's so sort of high up in Hollywood now that he's part of all this. And it sort of makes you think, well, well what's the level? What's the, what's the cut-off? Because, yeah, but if he is part of it, why is he not making better films or his films being more successful? Because I've read other stories that there are people that sign up to be a part of this suddenly get a big hit. Their films are like massive, and that's... but but then see that's uh, what have you got to like have you got to go on like uh, box office mojo, and then as soon as your whole box office earnings hit fifty million or mm. uh, you know one billion, then all of a sudden you like get something through the post and say you are now part of the Illuminati. But if it's like nine hundred ninety five million, you d- you're not on there. It's not like what what level is it where all of a sudden. Like, one day you're not part of this club, and then the next day, yeah. all of a sudden, you are. I don't know. Let's go and ask Dan Brown. I don't know, because that's, that's what seems to get me, is that, yes, these new people become, all of a sudden, like, oh, Chris Pratt is, like, this massive star in Hollywood, and now all of a sudden he's part of the Illuminati. Well, like, no, because then yesterday he wasn't. Just successful. He's just successful. And it seems to me that people are jealous of the success, so it has mm. to be for another reason apart from... And why is it just got to be in the entertainment industry? You get people that are very successful that aren't in it, and are they banded around like, what's his name, the Amazon bloke, who's now the richest man in the world? Is I mean, he suddenly part of it? You would think that somebody like that would 
would would definitely be in the Illuminati. So the guy they? that started in his garage just selling books and obviously found a niche. Exactly. It can't just be a niche in the market. He's got a sold his soul to the devil. Exactly. He's done the what's his name? Robert Johnson, is it? I don't know what that is. He was the guy that sold Oh, him. on the crossroads. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sold yeah. to the devil to make success of his music. Doesn't he do the music for our podcast? That's Rob. <laughs> <laughs> Rob Johnson. It's not, it's not Robert Johnson, oh, right. all right? Well, he might be. Well, it could be. Reincarnated. Okay, so the the moon landings. The moon landings I, were faked. I don't believe that. I, I genuinely that. think they landed on the moon. And it, it's like reading all the uh, I've read from the astronauts and the way they speak, they're so they were so animated about it and what happened and everything. And they did tours and tours about talking to it. And the the age old question was, so they did it back in the sixties and they don't do it now. Is that because they can't? And it's like, well, yes, we can. Yeah, but there's nothing up there. And and why would you? You've been there. Yeah, you, you've you done know it. Everything. We documented everything. Why, on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they, we know full well they're working on getting to Mars. And Twix. <laughs> e- um. But Trump has said he, he wants to go back to the moon, doesn't he? Because he wants to go to the moon and use that as a stepping stone to get to Mars. Well, they've, that's what NASA... I mean, if Trump's taking credit for that, he's a liar, because NASA was saying that. Hang on, how can you say... You can't say that Trump is a liar. That's the, NASA was saying disgusting. that back in the 80s, that the way they'd be able to get to Mars is from the moon, so it's, that's where they'll build the space station to go. It's... I mean, the, the, the coffee has, fee, the, and it's, it has it is that thing that just for sort of PR. Why have they not gone back? Mm. But I've, from, I, I cost, honestly, I honestly don't believe they didn't go. Yeah, because Stanley Kubrick is supposed to have directed it. Was, it. Yes. I mean, the bloke was. I know they they were relying on him being that recluse that he became. <laughs> But whoever worked with him, and when you listen to like Jack Nicholson talk about working with him on The Shining, they couldn't shut the fucker up. Yeah, yeah. So is he going to be one of these people that just talk and talk and talk, but never mention that? Oh, by the way, I filmed the moon landings. Yeah. Nah. I no, I agree. That's that's one of the ones that I do think. Yeah. Um, is crazy. And then we're going to build a space force. <laughs> is, that, is that your Trump, No, that's just everyone. That's just a generic president. I don't think it was. I that think was you were my trying Trump. to go for your Trump. <laughs> Trump is a hard one to do. Very hard. Yeah. I'm going to have to give that one a practice. Yeah, it's not got an easy voice. He's not got it? an easy voice. I think once you can crack it, you can, mm. you can get it. We've got to try and... Got to um, get his little scrawny mouth. Yeah. He's a weird chap, isn't he? Well, it's it is weird how politics on both sides of the pond seem to be just going right up shit creek at the moment. I'm not going to pretend I know anything about not politics, me. but as a as a normal guy Everyday person that, that that has to vote and has to make your decision about the people in front of you um in the UK at the present as we're recording this the Conservatives are now trying to find a new leader. Oh. And it amazes me that we are obviously going down the same route as America did with Trump in the fact that Boris Johnson is the favourite to become the <clears throat> Prime Minister. Yeah, and but that's was... not a public vote, though, is it? That's it's not. That's a not, Tory but, vote. But and... when you listen to people talking about him, they're going about how, how great he is and how honest he is. And... He's a fucking quitter. But he's not just that. I mean, he's a he's a he's an yeah. adulterer. He's a liar. Well, and he's, and he's a, a hypocrite. He's a hypocrite. That because he was slagging Gordon Brown off and saying it should have gone to the people when he took over from Tony Blair. Yeah. And now he's doing exactly what happened there. And he tries to do this sort of. Uh, oh, I, I, I'm I'm just this this friendly buffoon with a silly haircut. And he's not. No. He's, he seems to me to be a real dangerous person. But that seems to be the thing now, doesn't it? I think the reason the Tories are pushing somebody like him is because they saw how successful Farage was. I don't get Farage. I don't understand that either. But I, all I will say is I think all this is a reaction to people being so fucked off around the world with politicians politicians forgetting that their mandate of working for the people and they're working then, for themselves. I'm talking about every party, and I just it's think it's... always been like that. Yeah, hasn't but it's it getting been, worse, but though, it's isn't been, it? Hasn't it been a cycle of the people in power, when, when they say there's a general election, the yeah. people in power say, look at how great we've done, vote for us because we'll carry this on. We haven't quite worked out 
how to stop the shit from the people that were in before, but give us time and we'll get mm. in there. Then the opposite party say, ah, but they're shit. We can do it better this time. Then whatever happens in the general election, if the same people stay in, they fuck it about for another five, four yeah. years, five years. The other the company, the other party then say the same thing. You're doing shit. Then if the other party get in, it just becomes a, a cycle. It is. They I, carry I on for, like, for like four years or eight years saying, look, we've got to deal with the shit that we've been get left with, all the stuff we promised in the in the election. We can sort of do some of it, but we yeah. can't do all of it. And they're and, all as bad as each and other they all, now. I'm, I'm, I'm saying that like 75% of them are, are in it for themselves. Yeah, and, oh, there's, gotcha. there, yeah. and there are there are some people there that when you you hear, especially like in the back benches, mm. you can hear them talk and they're they're put they um, positive and passionate about certain things. Yeah. I can't remember the name of that one woman. I don't know whether she's conservative or Labour, Scottish woman. But every time I hear her speak, I think, see, now I would vote for you, and mm. I apologise. I can't remember her name. Quite a young woman. Um, I don't know if you saw that, and then, but I think it's the same in America. Yeah. I don't know if you saw the the, the thing on YouTube of John Stewart. You know, used to do the um, Daily Show. No, I have. Was it a Daily Show? Yeah, he did yeah. do it. Yeah, because um, what's his name? Um, I can't think of his name now. <laughs> <laughs> it's old age creepy. It is. is Trevor Noah. Trevor Noah. Yeah. yeah. Trevor Noah. <laughs> Tre- Trevor Noah. Well, he's part of a. Um, I don't know. It's a charity for nine eleven. Right. Um, and he was in. Um, I'm gonna try and try and find it. I, I mean, I'm not American, and I would vote for him if he wanted to. Yeah. Um, if he wanted to, he's very eloquent anyway, and I like John Stewart. Yeah, he's very clever because he, what he as, says. as much as he, he, you know that he's clever. Yeah. He knows that he's clever, but he can be funny with it as well. Mm. So when he's making a point, you know that that point. Is valid if that makes sense, and I'm obviously I'm sure he's probably got, you know, he's on one side of the political thing. Don't get me started on you know left wing and right wing. I've got no fucking idea what that means. Uh, there, is there any difference nowadays? Well, I, well, one I used don't to know. be for the working class, one used to be for the upper class, and it used to be like and then your ultra right wing and and all that yeah. sort of stuff. But anyway, he went to Congress because um, some of these nine eleven um, emergency workers are still waiting for, I think they're waiting for some kind of compensation or their, their money or the, it, they've been waiting for 18 years to get some kind of pay or, or something to do mm. with that. And um, he was disgusted because he started off by saying, well, actually, I don't know if I might be able to... Load it up. Uh, I want to thank Mr. Collins and Mr. Naylor for putting this together, but... Uh, as I sit here today, I can't help but think what an incredible metaphor this room is for the entire process that getting health care and benefits for 9-11 first responders has come to. Behind me, a filled room of 9-11 first responders, and in front of me, a nearly empty Congress. Sick and dying, they brought themselves down here to speak. And no one. And it goes on that for another nine minutes. It is it's powerful stuff. Yeah. But it and they they sometimes put the camera on the Congress. And there are, there's like half of them there. There's loads of empty chairs and stuff. And they're all looking like they're it, it almost looks like they are trying to look solemn and somber mm. and, and some of them are nodding and stuff. And John Stewart finds it really hard to get through what he has to say. You know, he's choking up a lot of the time. And it's just so powerful. It's yeah, powerful, powerful stuff. Um, but you sort of think, well, see, that is somebody that should be president. Not somebody yeah. who's a joke. Not somebody who's a joker. I, don't, I really... The, the state of... People are all very disillusioned now because we've had the austerity here that's been around the world. There's been all this change, swings to whatever extremism and everything like that. It's a worrying time, and maybe it isn't any different to what it is before, but obviously we're living that life now. But I think for future generations and generations going forward, the sad thing is that that I, I look at my son and my, my daughter, they are so disinterested. They, they literally say it doesn't matter anymore. It will be decided. 
It's a bit like your big boss in your big company. You know, you don't decide what you're wearing as a uniform. They will, and you'll just suck it up, even though you tell them it's not practical, that sort of thing. Do you see what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's the same, and and I worry, because the the people that are actually going out of voting are disappearing. The, the, uh, the biggest vote we've had in ages was whether we leave or stay, wasn't it? That's the amount of people that I'm talking to turning up. And then every other vote since it's just dwindled away. I didn't bother voting last time. No, for the, no. For the, I wasn't. I, I just thought well, it doesn't fucking matter. I mean, it. I mean, I was gonna. Play I'm not it. really a political person. No, either. I was gonna. I was gonna play another little bit of um, video. The, the, the actual picture is not very good, so it'd just be the audio. Right. But um, it makes you just wish back for those simpler days. If you're a single mother with two children which is the toughest job in America as far as I'm concerned. And you're working hard to put food on your family. Those who think that they can say, we're only going to have a stimulus package, but let's forget tax relief, misunderestimate, or excuse me, underestimate. Damn. Just making sure you're paying attention. <laughs> you were. I know the human being and fish can coexist peacefully. The responses have got to end in order for us to get the, the, the framework, the groundwork, not framework, the groundwork to discuss a framework for peace, to lay the... All right. <laughs> <laughs> Your brother actually gave me a book of Bushisms, and it became a very funny book that would stay on my toilet that everybody... I would... But so, don't you see that's the difference? I could, you always just remember oh, what a joke he is. Yeah. But it seemed harmless. It was harmless, a harmless joke. Yeah. But Trump you, until you watched and, uh, Michael Moore's documentary. Yeah, boy, yeah. But then with with Trump, it's you feel genuinely like this could be the end of the world. Yeah. This could seriously be the fucking end of times because you know it, the, the the major superpower that's right now is like North Korea. Isn't there? Um, and he's calling him like Rocket Man and stuff. <laughs> that's like, right. Like, yeah. You think, fucking hell, why are you doing? That? He thinks he's the. He thinks he's. Better than everybody, doesn't he, yeah. Trump? And yeah, he's he got does. this arrogance. And yeah, it's wrong. Isn't there um a, a con talk, going back to conspiracy the theory that the world will end? Is it this year or next year? And it's not just oh, man. I'm gonna. It's only just come back to me. I was reading all about it in the paper at work. Oh, I don't know. Where did you get that from? Oh, I was reading. Or, or was it online? But if it was the internet, it must be true. Of course. Um. <clears throat> but another conspiracy that it's supposed to end this year or next year. I mean, you got the likes of Brian Cox telling you it's um, um, in like a billion years the sun will kill us anyway in golf us. So. Well, yeah, but that's like millions of years. Billions, isn't it? Billions. So yeah, I think we'll Christ, be all right. I'll be a billion and fifty years old. We'll be all right for that. So I'm looking at this where it's saying um, list of dates predicted for apocalyptic events. So we start in uh, 66 BC. <laughs> oh, Christ. <laughs> Let's cast our mind all the way The back. 11th and 15th centuries, the 16th century. Uh, oh, yeah, there's only about 15 um, predictions there. In the 17th century, 18th century, 19th century... Uh, in the 20th century... Uh, let's see what we've got sort of a bit closer to home... Um, All I want is a leader of any party just to embrace love and peace for every man. Well, yeah, but that isn't that woman. what it's supposed to be. William H. Branham in 1977, this Christian minister predicted the rapture would occur no later than 1977. There you go. Let's hope he didn't write a book about it because yeah. that would be no good to anybody, would it? Uh, Luis Farrakhan, the leader of the Nation of Islam, declared that the Gulf War would be the War of Armageddon, which is the final war. That was in 1991. <laughs> Roland Stewart. Not... How pissed off was I with that first Gulf War, though? Right, I was on holiday, and I'd stayed up because I'd never watched a Richard Burton film called The Villain. It's the gangster film that he made in the 70s. And I was sat watching it, and I was getting into it, and I was enjoying it. And then suddenly the news broke that the... Um, 
the Gulf War had started, so they stopped the film to put live broadcast. I was like, for fuck's <laughs> sake! And I could never find it for years. I had to wait for like film four, no TCM to show it and record oh, right. it to actually finish that movie. And we're talking like 10, 12 years later. So here's here's one for you, Harold Camping. Oh, there you go. Camping predicted the rapture would occur 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 <laughs> occur on the sixth of September, nineteen ninety four. When it failed to occur, he revised the date to the 29th of September and then the 2nd of October. <laughs> he had three stabs at and it. And he still got it wrong. And he still got it wrong. Oh, then again, 31st of March, 1995, Camping's fourth predicted date for the end. This would be Camping's last prediction until 2011. Oh. So he had another 16 years off before he decided to have another go. So I'm just looking if there's any into the future then. So we've got 21st century... Um, so on the 9th of June, 2019. Oh, um, that was as we record this. That oh, was so that's uh, a couple that of might days be ago. why I read it then. Ronald Wineland, who previously predicted the world would end in 2011, 2012, and then 2013, predicted in 2018 that Jesus would return on the June the 9th, 2019. Prior to the date occurring, he began to express some doubts regarding his own prediction. So, I mean, anybody can do yeah. it. Yeah, anybody can do it. I mean, and there's even. My God, we've got three predictions for um, 2020, 2021, and 2026, and even some predictions in 21, 29, 22, 39, 22, 80. So if you were that way inclined, then, you could be that guy that makes all these predictions, and you could just basically write a book about it and then predict every year that it's going to end. Of course you could. And then if you are that guy that gets it right and it does end... In your year, you'd yeah. be like, see, told you. So it was well, yeah, but there's not going to be much book sales after that. Is no, there? but no. he'd have to book up to it, wouldn't he? Of but why. You've also got people here, says uh, Peter Tuthill, has said that in approximately 300,000 years, a triple star is expected to explode in a supernova. It has been suggested that it may produce a gamma ray burst that could pose a threat to life on Earth, should its poles be aligned 12% or lower towards Earth. Oh, so they, or we could just get a load of hulks oh. with all that gamma We won't ray. be here, though, would we? No. Uh, within the next one million years, Earth will likely have undergone a supervolcanic eruption large enough to erupt uh, 3,200 um, k- kilometres three. What's three? Is that cubed? Cubed, yeah. Is it? Uh, yeah. Of magma. An event comparable to the Toba super eruption 75,000 years ago. Whenever you say magma, I think of a 70s porn company. Do you? Because my friend... Magma. Led, do you remember the rounds that did with the porn video? You'd have the VHS tape and your mate would say, yeah, you can have it this week. And the one that we had going around school was a magma production. Oh, there you go, see. In 7.59 billion years... The Earth and the Moon will most likely be destroyed by falling into the Sun. Yeah. Just before the Sun reaches the largest of its red giant phase, when it'll be 256 times larger than its current size. Before the final collision, the Moon will possibly spiral below Earth's roach limit, or roach limit, breaking into a ring of debris, most of which would fall into Earth's surface. But surely there wouldn't be humans anyway, because if the Earth's getting that close, we'd all scorch anyway, wouldn't we? Well, if it's that size, yeah. I would have thought so. We're not going to be stood here going, oh, fuck, we're going into the sun. And 10 to the power of 100, oh, so whatever that is, I mean, you've got 22 billion here, but 10 to the power of 100, which is obviously billions and billions and billions of years, the time estimated for the heat death of the universe a hypothetical event in which the universe would diminish to a state of no thermodynamic free energy, becoming no longer able to sustain direct motion or life. Wow. There you go. I guarantee that Coronation Street will still be going on. Yeah, and I was going to say William Roach will still <laughs> be starring. Is, that he still, Roach... is he still alive? Let's make sure he is. Is he still alive? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. William Roach. Yeah, wasn't that his name? Because his son was Linus, wasn't it? He, he became an actor. He did a really. Good, he was in a really good film called Priest. Oh right, was he? Yeah, not Priest with Paul Bettany and that weird actiony thing. Yeah, no, he's still going. Eighty-seven years old. Did you see that woman in the Archers? Got to a hundred today. No. And she's still in the Archers. She started in nineteen fifty, and she had a. Was it yesterday or today? She had her hundredth birthday. Well, happy and she's birthday, still Mrs. Archers, and she's still in the Archers. Wow. 
Well, that's good. Yeah, that's so there good. you go. Did, did we, have a, we had a question, didn't we? Did, did you we? see? I didn't see one. Didn't you see I it? I saw one with um, from Rob James, who mentioned that you're singing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll mention that um, at the end, yeah. Oh, I didn't see the next no, one. No, from Stu, saying your favourite um, animated TV show. Oh, when I was, what, from now or from when well, I was a kid? your favourite and your worst. I used to love watching Godzilla when I was a kid, the animated. And Godzuki. I don't know why I really enjoyed that one. Didn't I wasn't a fan of Godzuki. I loved the original Scooby-Doo with that Scrappy. Right. Used to love that. The Spider-Man, the 70s Spider-Man animated. Okay. Probably really shit now, isn't it? Battle of the Planets, do you remember that? I do, yeah, yeah. I enjoyed that. Um, but when I was younger... I used to really love... Well, that would have been when you were young. No, like, really young. Like, I would say, like, five sort of age. I used to really love Mr. Ben. Okay. I, like, properly... When it was on, I used to get excited to watch it. I wanted to know what... I'd probably seen it before, but I still wanted to know what he was going to change into. Yeah. We were naive back then, weren't we? Well, yeah, and the, 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 the animation wasn't particularly... Don't you take that away from me. Well, it me. wasn't. Well, I'm not taking it away from <laughs> you. It's, it's always... It's there No, it for wasn't. You. We knew no different, though, did we? No. Really? There's only one winner, though. Simpsons. Oh, well, I'd love it's to. It's the yeah. only... The, 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 the whole I generation. And, and you look at them for predicting the future. Yeah, they've got everything right. They've been... It's been eerily... Correct, hasn't it? Correct. Mm. With the that just that one of Trump yeah. going down the escalator and doing the thumbs up. And he's there doing And he's wearing it, a yeah. red tie, and it's, like, literally exactly the same. I don't know whether... There's, has, a, has there's that all been sorts doctored of pictures or anything, or no, I don't believe you know, so. And like doing FaceTime on a on a phone and stuff like that, it's unbelievable. Mm. But I think they push the boundaries as well. Absolutely, don't they, they the did. Simpsons. And I think if, if it wasn't for the Simpsons, obviously you wouldn't have things like Family Guy. No, South Park. South Park. You wouldn't have Rick and Morty. I don't no. think. I think they they were one of those shows that worked on different. You know. Kids and adults were laughing at the same joke, but for different reasons. Yeah. Did you like the Simpsons movie? Yeah, I did, yeah. So did I. A lot of people I, slagged it off. I mean, it yeah. could have done with seeing some more of the background characters more, but it was the Simpsons, it, after all. It was. And it, uh, it, it was just I was an extended really shocked. episode. I didn't know full front or nudity. Yeah, I know, that was the funniest I was, bit. It was so funny, but I was genuinely like, oh, hello. Yeah, I think everybody was. Everybody was. Yeah. But yeah, I think that one, Rick and Morty, obviously, is something that I find really funny. Yeah. Archer, is, have you ever seen Archer? I've not watched Archer. Really good. Is it? It's really good. I still love King of the Hill. Yeah, King of the Hill. See, the 90s sort of, Apart from The Simpsons. Beavis and Butthead. Yeah, I was never really a big yeah. fan of Beavis well, and Butthead. It was just some music videos, wasn't it? And them in between. It was a typical sort yeah, of Yeah, I need to get back into South Park. Because, again, they must have had... They've had, like, 20-odd series now, haven't they? Book of Mormons coming to Bristol. I did Book see that. Book of Mormons that. coming yeah, to Bristol. I, I did see that. Yeah, that's in the new year, isn't it? No. It hasn't June, released June, a date oh, right, properly, okay. yeah. yeah. Just says, we're coming to see you. That's yeah. All. But yeah, that that's I think they're my favorite. The the ones from like my childhood and that mm. now. But what makes me laugh in The Simpsons is that there's episodes. If you bought the box sets or anything like that in America, they swore it wasn't really swearing in America, but in England, it's considered quite a thing. So when um, Mr. Burns calls Homer, no, you too, wankers, <laughs> it always makes me laugh. Ah, oh, swearing. Do you love? Oh, you love? We well, love swearing. Yeah, I like good. Yeah, I like a good swear. You got a favorite swear word? Um, I think all of them. Is there any that you're a little bit like, well, I shouldn't really say that. Do you think the C-bomb is... No, 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 no. Do you use that? I don't think it's got as much stigma to it now. Well, it obviously hasn't now, is you it? Because it's you... on the nine o'clock BBC One dramas and they would never have done that No, before. and you, you, you hear, you, you know, again, the most successful TV show probably of all time, Game of Thrones. And they dropped throwing, it, yeah. They're throwing the, the, you know, the word around... All the time, and but it's it, not even. It's not as powerful in America, though, is it? Yeah, but it's not even in Game of Thrones. It's not even used uh, to like emphasize a point. It's just part of a mm. sentence, isn't it? It's part of a Apparently, conversation, like it was actually as the it na- would... years and years and years ago. Yeah. The actual name for a female part was that, and it wasn't being rude. Yeah, it became. It's weird how words become rude. I do think it is an it's effective all just word, words, isn't it? though, in it. It's all just words. Is that all right, Bee Gees? It's only words, <laughs> and words are all I have. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah. So it's um, been quite a serious 
yeah. episode tonight. I don't normally like that. End with a swear word. Eh? End with... Uh, no. End with a swear word. That's what you want can to... You th- right, yeah, go. Can you think of a swear word for every letter of the alphabet? A so is let's, arsehole. Let's, let's go... You go right. A and I'll go so B. So, arsehole. Bollocks. Cunt. <laughs> hey! We've got to use it, haven't we? I mean, uh, okay, what we've got? Dick. Oh, E. E. You elephant-eared fucker. No, you no, it doesn't there work. There isn't one, is There's there? There's got to be. There's got to be a swear word that begins with E. Eunuch. Um, would that be, yeah, I suppose? It could be offensive to somebody, I suppose. I'll, really give, I'll give you that one. I'll give you that one. I can't think of anything else. You eunuch. You. Well, you got the easy one now. Oh, yeah, you fucker. F, G. Gonads. Yeah, I would have said that one. Um, what's that? H. I know it's not politically correct, but you homo. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's a swear word. But then again, in if you look at it like when we were at ki- uh, kids at school, that's something you would call somebody. Yeah, that it? was just it's a definitely der- not. It was a, it's not. A, you're not being derogatory about. Oh, the, you are the, now. You are. If you were to use it now, you would be. Yeah. But yeah. it was a swear word back in the day. No, I agree with you on so that. So H I. Ignoramus. That's not. <laughs> it's not even a swear word, is it? There isn't one for I. There, there probably is. That's what I'm saying. I'm gonna have to have a look, and I. Oh, so, I. That's yeah, but even to think of a normal word beginning with I is quite hard. It's quite a limited range, isn't there? People will be listening to this now and shouting at us. You need to have this one. You need two hands. <laughs> two old. So what was the other one? Oh, e wasn't it? Yeah. Right. So list of, list of swear words. Beginning with E. Oh, so they got nothing beginning with E. So we thought a eunuch. And I? Yeah, they got no words beginning with I. Okay, so I got J, so jizz. Okay. K? Ooh. No, K. Oh. Oh, what am I missing? Well, you could have cooch, which cooch? is a, oh, which yeah. is female genitalia. Yeah. Um, or you could, I mean, if you're going to be derogatory, kreit, which is a German. Okay, yeah. So I J K L um, lallies. <laughs> <laughs> On the good ship. All right, so L M. Motherfucker, <laughs> gonna chuck her. Right, N. I'm just gonna say N. Because that's all we need to do. I'm not going to say that well, word. Well, you could say nonce. All right, yeah, you could have nonce. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we yeah, won't N- say that word. O. Oh, swear word. O. Orgasm. No. Yeah, I, I, orgasm. That's, yeah, that's what I would have thought was orgasm. That's all there is, really. But that's not really a swear word, is it? Not really. Um... So got piss. <laughs> Stinking of piss. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where are we at? Q. Oh, no. There won't be one. At... Quim. Quim. There you go, Sid. Quim. Um, R. Um, rim job. <laughs> <laughs> are you just saying or asking? <laughs> S. Uh, spunk. Okay, uh, T, tits. <laughs> well, you know I got in trouble in a school lesson, don't you, for what? shouting spunk out. Did you? Yeah. Spunk out? No, I didn't I didn't throw <laughs> spunk out. I shouted it out in the middle well, of a class. Well, that wouldn't surprise me. Well, no, I was joking. There was a bit of a knobhead in the class who um, was chosen to read, and he goes, no, I don't want to do it. And, and they, the teacher said, come on, it's your turn. And I just thought, oh, come on. And I shouted at him, go on, Chris, show us your spunk. <laughs> <laughs> But they say that in movies. They do. That's that why was I in, said it. That was in Star Wars, like um, The Last Jedi. It was. And that's why I said it. Mm, what spunk. <laughs> <laughs> why would why, you why, use why, that would word? It, why like that as well? Yeah, that's like, that's what that was. Um... What spunk? <laughs> Come here now. <laughs> You got so you had titties, didn't you? <laughs> I did uh, tits. <laughs> All right, you. I prefer titties. You. Um, Who doesn't? Uranus. Yeah. Um. 
Although in this one, they've got Uncle Fucker for some reason. I don't know. Oh, really? <laughs> Shut your fucking mouth. Uh, v, Vagina. Vag. Vag, yeah. Oh. Uh, v, W. Wanker. Yeah. X. Ooh, You're not going to get anything for X, are you? X rated. This podcast is now X rated. Yeah. Uh, uh, y. This would be. Who's had X? Did you have X? I had X, yeah. Why? Well, you could probably have a d- discriminatory term against the Jewish community. Yeah, you could. Um, I can't think of anything else. Yeah. Yeast infection. <laughs> <laughs> Yeast infection. Is there a swear word beginning with Z? I don't think there is. Because the... Zebedee's dong. <laughs> That'd be called a zong. A uh, zong. Yeah, Zebedee's... Come here and look at my zong. Yeah. Actually, don't you feel better, though, when you have a little swear? Oh, yeah. It's definitely... It's, it's um... like a release, though, isn't it? I love it when older people that you don't normally hear swear, suddenly swear. Are you good at respecting other people that don't like swearing? Are you Not very really. good at... No. No? No. I mean, it's like I've always swear, swore in front of the kids... And like, well, the, I'm the, like that. The kids swear like, I mean, the kids swear like troopers now, which is a bit off putting because they're like eight, seven, four. Yeah. No, I'm only joking. They're all like. No, I swear. I've always sworn in front of my kids, but I've always told them there's a time and a place. Always be respectful for what other people think. Yeah. No, that's, yeah, that that's fine. And be respectful of where you I are. Wouldn't, yeah. I mean, like, if you're. If you went to if somebody work, else's house. Yeah, or if you're working, I wouldn't expect you to go, oh, what the fuck is going on? Oh, I do. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not in the, not right at the front. No. But if I have a little tizzy fit. <laughs> you and your tizzy fits. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> but no, it's um I don't I I've never thought there's anything wrong with swearing. I really haven't. Mm. As long as you like I say you're you're not being disrespectful. If you're just giving yourself a quick oh, for fuck's sake, I mean I'm always doing yeah. that. Yeah, uh, there's nothing. I don't think there's anything wrong I with do, I'm, uh, I'm quite. If I'm on my own and something goes wrong, it's the C bomb. Yeah, I'm very loud and very yeah. you. Yeah, or if I get those things, it'd be every fucking time. You know, I, I can't. If I drop something, mm. or is it, I, I think that's probably my. Or in the car. What the fuck do you think yeah. you're doing? <laughs> yeah, for fuck's sake, I think is my favorite yeah. one. I think that's the one. For fuck's sake, for oh. For fuck's sake. Mm. Or I'm going like, for fuck's sake. I'm like, for fuck's sake. It's great, isn't it? It makes you feel better. Yeah. There's nothing better than dropping a fuck cunt oh, shit. It <laughs> makes you feel good. It does. It does. It is a little bit like therapy. It is. Which is what this podcast is. Well, this episode... Will be called... <laughs> Pavo and Neil talk about swearing. <laughs> I think we've sworn a load. Well, yeah... Is that but has that been what this episode has been about? I don't it's know. been about everything. We've talked about everything and everything. Conspiracies, conspiracies. I poli- think... We even delved into politics. Yeah. We never really talked politics. I was going to say maybe we should call the episode conspiracies because yeah. you want to call it politics because you don't know Who's a if that's going to turn people off and b who that's going to mm. bring to the podcast. But don't forget if you are listening to this and do you want us to talk about anything, anything, anything. Anything at all, we will talk about it. Yeah, and we might I might not know about it. I think in the last, yeah, I was just about to say, in the last hour, you can realise that both of us know absolutely fuck all about politics. We know fuck all about the the facts of conspiracies. No, but that's the thing. We're just talking as everyday men. We uh, we are. We want I'm you and everyday people. We want you, the public, to come in and just listen in and be like you're in the pub and you're listening to our conversation. Indeed. And you'll just go, Christ, what's some inane chat yeah, you go through? Yeah, or leave us a comment saying, you know fuck all, Jon Snow. Yeah, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> you can't. Yeah, feel free on... Uh... I was going to say on Apple Podcasts, leave us a review that just says cunt, but don't yeah, do that. Yeah, please don't. You'll I'm get sure, us taken yeah, as down. Yeah, it will get taken down. Even though I'd, I would find a, a, a one-word review like that funny. Email us. Just email us, pavoneal at hotmail.com, with your one-word review. And if you want to put cunt, then put that. No, actually. Because we do love you. <clears throat> if you do email us cunt, the, just the word cunt, in our email... You'll be put into a prize draw. We'll find a little prize. Yeah, we'll for find you. a prize. We all will. right, we, we'll leave it going. We'll for all. Yeah, for all of you that do that, to Pavo Neil, Pavo Neil at hotmail dot com. 
just send us an email with the word cunt. Not um, as the topic. No, as, as, as the actual email, email message. Yeah. And we'll find a little cunty prize for yeah, you. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's funny. So, yeah, we'll do a draw. I yeah. mean, obviously we won't find a cunty prize for all of you that put that, that word. Who can put it in the best font? <laughs> yeah, the best font. Make us laugh with the one word of cunt in an email. You or, can have the best font I'll or tell picture. You what, or give us a, like, a movie title, but replace one of the words with cunt. Oh, yeah. So you could have, like, for Star Wars, The Cunt Strikes Back. Uh, yeah. Or, or Star Wars, A New Cunt. <laughs> or the Tom Cruise film, Top Cunt. <laughs> Top Cunt. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, see? Yeah. Or the Kevin Costner film, The Uncountables. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, which is also, and um, then you could have the uh, Disney film, The Incuntables. You could, and you could also have <laughs> Sylvester Stallone in Cunty 1, Cunty 2, Cunty 3, Cunty 4, Cunty yeah. 5, and Cunty Balboa. Or his first franchise, First Cunt, yeah. Rambo First Cunt Part 2. <laughs> uh, or you could change that and have Cunt Blood. <laughs> cunt Blood oh. Part 2. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. oh, so many cunts. And on that note, <laughs> and on that note, we better go and wash our mouths. Uh, so. Yes, let me just say beforehand, uh, as we're recording this, if you are listening in the Stroud Sirencester area, I'm going to be singing. I've got a gig at the Butcher's Arms in Oak Ridge, Stroud, Stroud, which will be fun on Saturday. So come along. It's Is free it Saturday? entry. It is Saturday, yes. Not today isn't Saturday. No, no, but when you're singing, but as it we're will recording be this, um, it will be Saturday. So come along, it should be fun. You sure it's Saturday? I'm looking at that and it says, um, oh no, yeah. that's the wrong yeah, thing. Yeah, don't worry about that. No, that's all right. Don't you worry your pretty little cunty head. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ooh, like a cracky cunt. Um, yes. <laughs> Crushy cunt. Yeah. <laughs> Stu Frank. Cracker. <laughs> I was thinking of Cracker Jack, you see. Yeah, you are. It's a wife. Stu Francis. Yeah, I know. Just but his he never went, ooh, like a Cracker Grape. No, but I was thinking of Cracker Jack and I said Cracker crack- Jack. Mm. Ooh, I can crush a grape. I, to be honest, like when I'm editing the YouTube video for this, I've got no idea what I'm going to put up on as a picture when we keep saying cunt. That's going to be really strange. Donald Trump. <laughs> yeah, we could do. <laughs> I might just have like a, an old school teacher looking horrified every time yeah. you say it. Like, like that. Yeah. We'll okay. Take um, care, ladies and gentlemen. So, yeah, folk. so please subscribe to the podcast and leave us a, a review. If and you I'm leave waiting us, for those emails. If you want to enter the uh, cunt competition, then please uh, send us an email, pavoneal at hotmail.com. And put in the actual message uh, a film, and then just change one of the words for cunt. Yeah, and uh, we'll put all of them in a draw, and we'll find a little prize that we can give out. Uh, something that's quite there'll be apt. something. We'll, we'll find. Be, we've we got will. something that we can give away. I'm sure. I'm sure there is. Um, uh, what else have we got? Yeah, come and see us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Uh, Pavo and Neil. Uh, email, I've already said that. Um, I think that'll do. It? And just rate and review this podcast. Please. Rate and review. The God- oh my God, that's loud. <laughs> you got that. uh, It's good that we finished a little bit more uh, cunty. <laughs> Disorganised. Yeah. That'll do. Cheers, everyone. <laughs>